Our scripture reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am. Uh, he said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom I have whom I love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey and the boy and I will go over there and come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. He himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked together. Isaac and Ben said, Here I am. He said, The fire and the wood are here. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walk on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham, and Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as numerous as the sand on the seashore. Because you have obeyed my voice, this is the word of the Lord for all of us, the people of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our hearts yearn to live in your will, and we seek to have faith in you even as the darkness in our minds leave us without clear knowledge of your perfect will for our lives. Help us now to accept all things written in your holy word, that we will walk with faith in you all the days of our lives. In the name of Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
Good morning, and I want you to know that I'm overwhelmed with joy to be able to speak to you this morning, even though I cannot see you. I have faith that this wonderful new technology will enable you to receive this message. Whenever I encounter the story of Abraham, I am in awe of the faith that he demonstrated to God by offering his son Isaac as a sacrifice to God. He did not have Holy Scripture to guide him as we have. Even with the knowledge of Scripture, I do not believe that I could have made such a gesture. As we live today, our customs and traditions would not allow us to do such a thing. After all, today that would be considered murder in both our laws and God law. So often we have pitted the word of God against the science of man. It is fitting that our scripture lesson this morning is from Genesis. And it seems that our scientists have concluded that our world and universe were created by a big bang said to have happened 13 billion years ago. Well, they openly admit that this is theory and not fact. So I need to tell you that in my school days, which was not quite 13 billion years ago, theory was an unproven idea and the fact could be proven. In fact, it is impossible to prove the Big Bang Theory since we cannot go beyond that point in time. Nonetheless, our scientists today accept that theory as fact, and many other thoughts about our universe have their foundation based on the Big Bang Theory. Genesis is our book of creation, and it is written, without a doubt, with thin specifics. However, it enables us to begin to know God, and over time, we develop trust in His account, even without specifics. This is where faith begins. The biblical definition of, of faith is found in Hebrews chapter 11, and it gives us the notion that our acceptance of God's creation is a matter of faith. It is not wrong to have faith in human endeavors. We use the products of our labor every day. On faith, I trust that the lights in my house will come on when I flip the switch. And I understand the science behind that system. I also have faith that when I turn the ignition switch in my car that Sir Arthur provided for me, it will crank up and drive me safely to the church. I have faith in so many of the products of human endeavor because I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sit it on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please understand that when we accept the gospel of Jesus, as stated in the Apostles' Creed, all that is created in the heavens and on the earth are made possible by Him. Our lives on this earth 
would be a miserable existence without faith in our Creator. Such a life would be without moral direction or divine purpose. And I regret that many of our fellow human beings find themselves in just that predicament. As Christians, our faith must lead us to bring the good news of Christ to all that we encounter with love. So often, we are distracted from that great and noble commission ordained by the Lord Jesus himself, and we focus on the symptoms of our fallen world, such as abortion, immoral behavior of all kinds, and differences in our beliefs. During his human ministry, our Lord Jesus made it clear that God's capacity for forgiveness is almost without limits. When human beings hear and heed the gospel of Jesus, so our primary task must always be to spread the gospel every day of our lives. Now let us recall that Jesus spoke a great deal about faith to his disciples in his ministry. I am struck by the fact that he had little regard for the faith shown by his chosen followers. He once praised a Roman centurion for having more faith than anyone he had seen in Jerusalem. I am afraid that if he were here today, he would have the same thoughts about us. Today's Christian followers. I don't know that many of us believe that we could command the mountain to move and expect it to happen. Our minds have been polluted by worldly standards, and that would be considered not logical. Therefore, it cannot happen. That is correct by worldly standards. However, if we can totally surrender to the Lord Jesus, as in John 15, 1, with faith, all things are possible. God truly is omnipotent, and there is nothing too hard for him. It is exceedingly difficult for the human mind to grasp spiritual realities that do not conform to what is possible in the physical world. Many of us have spent a lifetime debunking the claims of individuals said to have supernatural powers. As stated in John 15, we are branches and the Lord Jesus is the vine. Without the vine, the branches can do nothing. Our scripture teaches us that faith healing is part of our role as followers of the Lord Jesus. This gift is not for everyone, as is true for other spiritual gifts. To be sure, I cannot sing like Susan Hendricks or Pastor Chris. My point is that God gives gifts of all, to all of his people, but not all people receive the same gift. When we exercise our faith in God, we come to realize that the impossible may be difficult, but very much doable. Consider that our little church family has accomplished great things over the years, and it, is, it surely took a significant portion of faith to make those things happen. Prayer with faith will help you sleep well at night. I ask you now to consider the late Congressman John Lewis. He was violently beaten, kicked, had his skull fractured, and he wound up in the, president, in the presence 
of President Lyndon Baines Johnson when he signed the Voting Rights Act into law in 1965. That is where faith can take you. God bless you all. Amen.